you today, and, and really, uh, it's just a time for you to, to sit in on an intimate conversation. It's not scripted. There's nothing uh, that we're setting to accomplish other than just to allow you to hear a little bit about his story and his life and what God has done. It's going to be an exciting time, so let's give a credibly warm rock welcome to Jim Kavitzel. I just hugged Jesus. <laughs> and he really is that tall. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. It's great to be here. Thank you. We're so blessed to have you here as our guest and being transparent and just making yourself available to us. Uh, just great to have you with us here in San Diego. And uh, we know we're going to talk about the passion. We're going to talk about your new project, uh, Word of Promise. and a little bit about you, but um, tell us a little bit about yourself. We know you're a husband, a family man, got kids. Tell us a little bit about your family. I'm from the state of Washington. and uh, We won't hold that against him, right? <laughs> Seahawks, I don't know. Cowboys. <laughs> can, can you diss me in my own house? I mean, what's up with that, you know? <laughs> the... Uh, uh, my wife, uh, uh, 14 years, uh, we uh, both are from Washington State, and uh, we have two adopted children from China. Uh, one is 10, and one is 8. Awesome. And you're a Harley guy, you like to ride. Yeah. We, we, knew, we had a, knew we had a common bond. We started talking about, motor he, he, he rode his motorcycle down this weekend, and I said, okay, this guy's got to be a Christian. <laughs> he's he's got to be all right because we know the Lord's down with Harleys and motorcycles. So. <laughs> okay, let's get back on track. Sorry. Right. We talk about motorcycles, you get off track. But the passion, uh, global phenomenon, incredible theatrical masterpiece, uh, literally reached worldwide. Uh, still the number one R rated selling movie of all time. Uh, incredibly, beating the Matrix Revolution, beating Saving Private Ryan, just phenomenal. And so tell us a little bit about the journey of how you, you got that part and, and were able to get into that role and meeting Mel and kind of how that transpired. I, I met uh, Steve McAvity, his producing partner, at a picnic bench one day. Um, they uh, called my agent up, and uh, <clears throat> but they didn't want to let out that that the, it was a passion uh, m movie about Jesus. So they s sent me a script called Mavericks that they're actually and then about 40 minutes in, Mel Gibson shows up. And uh, he, uh, in person, very shy, uh, always looking down, and he smokes non-stop and uh, yeah and uh, it, but for 15 years he had he, he, as I got to know him that he had 15 years that he felt uh, in his heart that God was calling him to make this movie and he knew what would happen if he did this movie and um, eventually they used the uh, surfing movie as a front and I kept he started talking about Jesus this and Jesus that different thing and I'm looking at him thinking about Jesus on a surfboard this <laughs> right <laughs> he walks on water but he might not surf right? yeah so I said you, you, you want me to uh, um, play Jesus and he says yeah and the next day uh, he called me at home and he tried to talk me out of it and uh, you know, that's how it is. You, you make a commitment to Christ that you're going to do that, and then the devil comes in and sips you out. And all of a sudden, I shouldn't have had this meeting. I shouldn't have done this. I, I've, I, I've done all these things, and people will find out eventually that this is the kind of person I am, and uh, I can't 
do this movie. I'm the wrong guy. I shouldn't direct this. And so he called me. He says, if you do this movie, you may never work in this town again. I don't want to be responsible for that. And, uh, I, and I felt the fear because I thought, thought of all the nice things that I have. And I realized that God had got me into this business, that my talent came from God, not from man. And so I said, look, man, we're all called to carry our own cross. If you don't pick up and carry your cross, you will be crushed by the weight of it. He got real quiet on the phone, and I said, oh, my. He said, what? I said, I just realize my initials are JC and I'm 33 years old and he says God you're freaking me out and I hung up the phone <laughs> yeah enough said right yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a well yeah he, he what can you say you know I mean kind of kind of portrays the, the lifestyle that he's in now but you know as you built a relationship with him and you accepted the role. Obviously, there were incredibly hard physical demands upon you, um, you know, learning the language, just obviously the climate you were going to be working in. Talk about your preparation for the role and, and what it took from you. Well, initially, I just said, all right, here's a script. I read it. And, okay, this is what you do with any script. And I start researching it. And this one was right to the Bible. And, uh, and but it what was amazing is that that uh, everybody wants resurrection, nobody wants suffering. I want, but can you have the gold medal without suffering? Mm -hmm. Can you sit on, does a man when he's sitting there and his country's flag is going up and he's got a gold medal around his neck and he's weeping, is he going, I'm crying because Nike just called and has given me a $30 million contract. <laughs> that right. must be it. Yeah. Or is it that I see the sacrifice I see my family suffering. I see them what they, my, my, you're joined to a lot of other people that have given so much into your country and to people that have given their life for God in the, in the, in paying with their own blood. And you hear the Star Spangled Banner. Much the same way in this piece, I wanted this thing to transcend. I, if I'm going to do this movie, I don't want to do the, passion of mediocrity yeah. or something that is a little pagan that he wasn't handed over by his own that only the Romans were so responsible mm -hmm. but in if you look at it day after day that we all a part of handing Christ over when we contribute to sin especially when we betray him and we are Christians mm -hmm. but Jesus then continues to tell us to get back up to try to keep going mm -hmm. um, the doing the movie um, in uh, going about doing this movie was you know thinking that if we had done this thing in a, a controlled set you would have never saw the, the performance you, it was truly birthed in pain oh. and it immediately threw me on my face so right from the get go I had my shoulder separated at that point, I'm thinking, you know, God, hey, hello, we're trying to do a movie here. You know, I'm an actor. <laughs> right, right. I'm just an actor here. You're, you're letting, you know, Give the devil <laughs> or whatever it, to, to dis destroy us. Yeah. At the same time, we're getting fo phone calls and stuff from major publications mm -hmm. saying expressed interest that Mel Gibson is anti-Semitic. And all this stuff is compounding over and over. The cursing the the uh, remember at one point um, uh, Mel Gibson uh, he would take God's name in vain and I would say hey as Jesus and looking as Jesus and I said don't take my father's name in vain yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> And, and so that I would be, I've become him. And it was a big part of that I don't want people to see me. I want them to see Jesus. Sure. That when people come to the theater, that what they experience is they can look right at themselves the way God sees them. Not the way we see ourselves, but the way God sees us. And that's who you really are. Yeah. And so 
again, I go, is that the, I was scourged, uh, accidentally hit, whipped. Um, during the carrying of the cross, my shoulder was dislocated. Up on the cr cross, uh, I had, you know, I, I weighed 210 pounds. Uh, in the filming, I was about 168. I, I was so sick, I kept throwing up. I had my, both lungs filled with fluid, pneumonia. After the movie was over, many people don't know, and I don't talk about it too much, but I had ha have to have heart surgery. Wow. So I was struck by lightning on the last sh shot of the day. So <laughs> That's the, kind so of a moving encounter right there. <laughs> so what I'm telling you, it, wow. you know, if you want to be a Christian, you know, you're in for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've got these buzzers under the seat, you know. <laughs> you feel something hot, it's just, it's Jim's fault, not ours. Just Blame it on Jesus, right? So uh, we're going to look at a couple of clips. In just sure. a minute, we're going to look at uh, the whipping scene and the, and the thrashing scene. And um, I understand that uh, during the flogging, uh, Mel, <laughs> Mel kind of impromptu made some adjustments that were not in your favor. Hmm. Uh, during, during the uh, scourging scene on accident, uh, there's, we, we didn't really rehearse this. Uh, but we had a metal plank uh, on the uh, on my about a foot away from my back, right here, and I'm standing this right here, and and they would hit the metal plank, and then there's one, two, three cameras uh, on this particular day, and Mel in the middle of the the shoot because these guys don't speak English and we don't speak Italian, so there's a translation problem. So he's telling Caridi, his his assistant, to translate to them to tell him to hit Jim like baseball, you know, like a pitcher in a baseball game. And they, they're like, what? they don't play baseball. And he's like, oh, oh, I cricket. <laughs> so they, they went back here and take, took a run like this. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like that. And they hit the metal plank, except with that momentum, the whip went over and 14-inch four, gash on my back. And I went right down like in a uh, football game where you get the wind knocked out of you. Why, did it hurt or something? Is that what you... I mean... <laughs> no. no, I saw God. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's roll the clip. Let's talk a little bit about the, about the whipping. And uh, we're going to just t walk, walk through it a little bit. Let's, let's, let's roll that. <laughs> I am. <laughs> So they're not being kind in this moment. They're kind of jerking you around a little bit. Yeah. Um, pause it right there. Pause it right there. Oh, maybe we could go back just, just slightly. Sure. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of just thinking to myself, you're hearing them flexing the, flaw, the bows in the back. What's going through your mind at that point? <laughs> um, at that point, I'm thinking about all my sins. The, the whole part was, you know, I'm not worthy to play this role. Yeah. And that's a good place to be in. I told a friend of mine that, and, you know, he, he says, well, you know, Jim, th God doesn't always choose the best. <laughs> <laughs> but he chose you. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I was in a, a place of deep, deep, uh, just like in a in the zone yeah. and and throughout the whole film I was always meditating and always praying the whole time yeah. and and uh, uh, as you would say staying in character um, and this was important because I knew that for only the people that would be able to see Jesus is through the prayer mm -hmm. the daily prayer and the fasting and the fasting was immediate because of the sickness um, at the end of the movie, when I was on the cross, um, my body is blue. There was no makeup. My body was actually blue. Wow. They, between takes, as I'm here, um, they would put, uh, they would take me down, and my, every time my shoulder was locked in, there was a thousand foot cliff, and it would hit the cross, and would snap my shoulder out of joint, and I was, in, I, I was just beyond and at that point I was so sick that it would be ripped out and I, 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 I honestly I could barely feel it anyway I was so gone but something was wrong with my heart 
And the man put a stethoscope on my heart and he said, Mel, he can die. And at that point, you know, Mel, the, some of the greatest things about Mel Gibson was that he was a gambling man. And he said, Jim, what do you think? And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going, to, between me and, this is between me and God. Because I never thought I was good enough. Mm. Wow. And at that point, moment it was I'm ready to go home mm -hmm. so you can take me here there's no problem but I knew if I died making this movie I knew that people would be so many people would be safe yeah at the end of the movie I was walking up the the, the mountainside as I got up about halfway everybody's in um, everybody's in lo location mm -hmm. uh, about 250 people about halfway up I felt this presence come over me, an evil presence, and it was, you're a dead man. And I remember thinking, this is the best news. This is where I was. This is the best news I've ever had because I know if I die, I'm going to heaven. Oh. I got to the top. Um, about the fifth take, the clouds were so low, the thunder and lightning was uh, the sound of a howitzer. It was so powerful. The, you could feel the earth move. Yeah. And I saw uh, two people that were about as close as these two are to me, and their eyes were looking up, and they were watering like they were going to cry. And my hair, I couldn't feel it, and I heard a huge gasp in the audience because they saw something, and I couldn't hear anything. It was like an eye of a storm. Uh -huh. If you're in the eye of the storm, your hair could be blowing, it could be 30 knot winds, and I don't, I'd never heard, it, heard the wind blowing. I could just, oh, it was silence. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, and this light came right down from heaven and lit me up. What people witnessed was an illumination around my body and a fire on the right and left side of my head. And for one moment, I was looking at myself outside my body. You got struck with lightning. I was struck by lightning. Yeah. And the... There were three groups of people, uh, Pastor Miles mentioned that it, asked me this yesterday, was it true there were a lot of people that were very indifferent about doing, you know, being extras in the movie? I said, yes, tremendous amount. In fact, there were three groups of people, and there were the believers, and there were the non-believers, and there were the fence riders. They're the ones that are very indifferent about it. Mm -hmm. Two of those are bad decisions, but um, the, what was amazing is that people who think the offense riding think that that's not a choice. It is a choice. Mm -hmm. You are fence riding, and that is a decision that one is making. Mm -hmm. And um, but when I was hit, everybody fell on their face. Amazing. The ground shook. Yeah. And um, from that point, that was the last shot of the movie. We're gonna, in a second, we're going to look at that last scene when they dropped the cross into the, into the ground and it shook. And yeah. you, were, you were telling me over our conversation that as the, because where you were elevated, uh, the wind would blow and the cross would move and your shoulder would continually come out of socket mm -hmm. and uh, the pneumonia had set in your lungs and some of those things. Tell us about that.